السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى Most gracious, most merciful الحمد لله All praise is indeed due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين His household, his companions We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to bless them to bless every single one of us, to grant us goodness, to open the doors of ease for every one of us, to fulfill all our needs, to grant us ease through all our difficulties, and to bless us during this beautiful upcoming month of Ramadan. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, we all know that Ramadan is around the corner. Am I right? Which corner? Subhanallah. We all know that Ramadan is around the corner. And we all want the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every one of us would like to achieve forgiveness, closeness to Allah. We want the tranquility, the peace that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is promising. I promise you, I my brothers and sisters, we have goodness in our hearts. We have goodness within our systems. It's just that sometimes shaitan, the devil, the accursed, makes us forget that there is a lot of goodness within us and we become overpowered at times by the evil force. And this is why reminders of this nature are extremely important. Reminders of this nature are extremely important because they should make us feel like, yes, indeed, we are good people. I have goodness in me. I'm convinced about it. And I am convinced that every one of you, there is some good within you that we need to try and enhance, we need to try and develop and grow. We, and that is what life is all about, the growth of the goodness, the diminishing of the evil, and the living of this beautiful life in a way that as we pass through its days, its months, its years, we become closer to the Almighty so that when we pass away, we're actually very, very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the closest we ever were. So. I'm excited about this beautiful month. Are you? MashaAllah. So I guess that excitement must be meaning the freezers are all full. MashaAllah. You know, all the pies and everything else is ready. Alhamdulillah. SubhanAllah. But I don't know if that excitement translates into something deeper than just the preparation for the food. And by the way, something strange is when we speak to those who don't know much about Islam and we say this is the month of Ramadan and they say, oh yeah, Ramadan, I know Ramadan. Ramadan was the Egyptian brother living next door, you know. But no, to be honest, we would explain to them it's the month where we don't eat. If they were to come into our kitchens and witness what goes on, they'd probably think, no, 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 I think you're mistaken. It's the month where you do eat actually. Subhanallah. Isn't that a reality? Wallahi, it's facts. We burden ourselves with so much. I know in my part of the world, perhaps here too, where people ask for freezers, especially just before Ramadan, because they don't have enough space in their own freezers. So they hire it out, or for example, they buy a new one and they need to fill it with food. Well, I don't want to comment about it. It's not haram. It's actually okay. It's permissible. It's part of the gift of Allah because the hadith says, لِسَّائِمِ فَرْحَتَانِ فَرْحَةٌ عِنْدَ فِطْرِهِ وَفَرْحَةٌ عِنْدَ لِقَاءِ رَبِّهِ A person who fasts has two points of happiness. One is when he opens his fast and two is when he meets with his Rabb. And the opening of the fast refers to two things. One is on a daily basis when you put something in your mouth at the end of the fast, the feeling is just so beautiful. So good, mashallah. You know, the most unhealthy, let me start with the other one. The healthiest thing you can put in your mouth is a date. Remember I said put in your mouth, not uh, go out to it. But I'm talking about the healthiest thing you can put in your mouth is a date, subhanallah. It is filled with fiber, with iron, with so much more, you know. And it's something that is a gift from Allah. If you were to put in your mouth a date at the time of the opening of the fast, I promise you, not only would it be healthy, but you would achieve a spirituality by fulfilling the sunnah and the practice of Muhammad, peace be upon him. And it's not like a race. The Adhan of Maghrib goes and the next thing is we all 
try and, you know, get as much food as we want. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. Make it Ramadan with the difference. Be civilized, be decent. I know I'm speaking here in Europe. And subhanallah, here up north in Manchester, the fasts are even longer than London. Am I right? Wow, that was a quick yes. Subhanallah, you worked it out as well, right? Subhanallah, I did work it out too. And that's why at the end of Ramadan, I want to come and spend the day of Eid, mashallah, with my family and friends, perhaps in the park, in, at the Valentine Park in London, perhaps, inshallah. And I was looking at when to come. And I'm thinking perhaps I'll come in time for the 27th, because the 27th, as you know, it's one of the possibilities of uh, the night of decree. But we need to start planning from now. What are we going to be doing? Where are we going to be? Where are we going to go for Taraweeh, etc., etc.? The point I was raising is the fasts are a little bit longer. So the, the sweetness of that date as, sorry, the date, date. The sweetness of that tum, okay, that you're going to be putting into your mouth, subhanAllah, is such, my brothers and sisters, that the dua you make at that juncture, Allah says, it is for you. That point, what is the dua you're going to make? Oh Allah, grant me forgiveness. Oh Allah, accept this fast from me. Oh Allah, open my doors. Oh Allah, help my brothers and sisters across the globe who are suffering. I pause for a moment. My brothers and sisters, every day of Ramadan, undertake from now, at the time of iftar, we are going to pray for those who are suffering across the globe. Is that a deal? Inshallah. It's the minimum you could do. We are going to reach out, subhanAllah. Look at what happened. Do you know what just happened? Didn't we just say, Oh Allah, help those who are suffering across the globe? I was struggling with the heat. As I said that, and some must have said, Ameen, this, this, this fan actually came on the air conditioned and I could feel it. SubhanAllah, it's amazing. Instant, instant response to a dua. Amazing. So my brothers and sisters, we must promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the dua, the supplication we're going to make is not going to be selfish, not just for me. It's not me, myself and I. No, it's about the others as well. We're, we have a family, we have a community, we have an ummah, and we have humanity at large. We need to pray. We need to pray hard. We are taught that when you pray for others, the angels pray for you in the same way. When you ask goodness for someone, that goodness is being asked for you. Become in a habit of making a good dua rather than a dua of destruction. Because if you make a dua for destruction for someone else, the evil effect of that dua might just rebound onto you. Remember that. It's a reality. If they don't deserve it, it's going to come back to you. So try to get out of this habit of making dua for destruction and evil for others. Oh Allah, break that person, destroy this person, damage that person. I don't even know what words people use in their dua. We rather say, oh Allah, soften their hearts. Oh Allah, open their doors. Oh Allah, help them. Oh Allah, grant them goodness. Oh Allah, make them pure, etc. So we're making ourselves pure as well as a result. So we have a long fast, mashallah, tabarakallah. And the healthiest thing you could put in your mouth is a date. The most unhealthy thing that you could put in your mouth is... I'm hearing people saying samosa, fries. I didn't say anything. I haven't even said it. I just said is. And I left the blank. So you filled it, subhanallah, with your own words. But what are you going to be having more of? The healthy or the unhealthy? The unhealthy. Unfortunately, why? Because it's tasty. Okay, that's a very, very interesting observation. We would love our pies and our fries and our savories and what we've prepared. You know, back at home, my wife sent me a picture on WhatsApp of one of her friends. The freezer is so beautifully organized with tubs, subhanAllah. Each tub says day one, day two, day three, day four. And I'm thinking this is supposed to be the dhikr of Allah and the plan of what you're going to do to gain closeness to Allah. And here we have day four. And these are, I actually have it on my phone. These are tubs. In them there is food. SubhanAllah, you can actually see. It's plastic. You can see through. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, it's not haram. But look, my brothers and sisters, something very important. Are we not all becoming more health conscious? I want an answer. We're becoming more health conscious. As time passes, people are talking of organic. People are talking of this, that, everything else. I told you the most unhealthy. Everyone knows already. Too much oil, too much this, too much that. Unhealthy. Cholesterol, what have you. Carbs, 
Everyone wants to limit what they're having because we all want a figure. We all want a body that looks good. We all want, subhanallah, to feel healthy. We all want goodness, etc., etc. But I want to tell you something. We are so concerned about this health of ours and the way we look that we go out to spend hours in a gym, 45 minutes to two hours a day. We will sweat. We will struggle. We are dedicated. We will not want to miss at all. We make sure we stay away from certain foods just because you want to look good, just because you want to get rid of something called a love handle, you know. That's why there's so little of love nowadays because those handles are missing, by the way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. Okay, I'm just covering myself, alhamdulillah. So, my brothers and sisters, it's a reality. People make an effort. They are dedicated. You're offering them something. They tell you, I won't eat because it's not healthy. I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, if we had a shape spiritually, I wonder whether we would like to look at ourselves in the mirror. That's the type of shape we would be. The most unhealthy things we do for our spirituality, we are never at the spiritual gym. And by the way, going up and down in Salah is not the gym. It's the quality of it. It's the way you pray. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires a minimum. That's a fact. The farah and what is compulsory, I cannot decrease that for you. But what I do know is the quality of it is more important than anything else because when I obey Allah, I'm doing it for my benefit, not for His. So I want to discuss this issue of dedication during the month of Ramadan. In the same way we are dedicated to ensuring that, you know, our health inshallah is going to be good and we'd like to eat low GI, that which is beneficial, the fast going to be long. One of my friends here, seated here today, I'm sorry to... Well, it's not an embarrassment, but to mention this, he gave me a box of chocolates, okay? You know what it says? From the USA, the Ramadan bar. Have you seen it? Subhanallah. <laughs> you know what it says on there? Subhanallah. The fasts that last, subhanallah. You put it in your mouth, you eat it, it's supposed to last a long, long time. It's a Ramadan bar. Well, I'm happy to have received that, but I want to tell you the effort we're making to ensure that the food is correct is only a small percentage it's supposed to be a small percentage more than that i need to change my life when you would like people to look at you to turn for example may allah make it halal people do it for haram reasons when you want people to admire when you want people to when you want to feel good actually we should be doing it for us to feel good in reality i'm doing it for myself